This year, the S&P 500 hit all-time record highs, and to date, it is up by over 4.5%. However, in the UK, things don't seem to be getting any better, with the Bank of England saying that they're not going to reduce interest rates anytime soon because we have something called sticky inflation. As a result, the FTSE 100 is down by over 1.3%, and the FTSE 250 is down by over 1.5%. Will it ever get better for the UK? I don't care about the noise because in my invest engine portfolio, I invest £100 per month regardless of where the market is heading. If you do want to sign up to Invest Engine, which offers one of the lowest fees that you can possibly get for ETFs within the UK and all sorts of extra stuff like a free stocks and shares ISA, if you use the link in the description down below, you will receive up to £50 bonus when signing up and topping your account with £100. So my £100 per month portfolio actually consists of five portfolio cards they mostly consist of a handful of ETFs that I've chosen that I want to invest in for the long term. Every month, whenever I get spare cash, I put £100 into whatever at the time is performing the worst. I'm going to go through each of these portfolios and show you how they have been performing. And then I'm going to go up to my ISA, which is considerably bigger. And in this ISA, I don't actually go around the same rules as these other portfolios. So first I have a portfolio called the VUSA VJPN. And as you can see, the portfolio balance is currently £213.59. My investment return since I've started investing has been a positive 23.58% which is actually incredibly good. So as you can see I only started investing in August 2022 so within less than two years I am up by 23% and of course I'm going to show you how I've achieved this. So the last time I actually invested into this portfolio has been over a year back in January 2023 and this portfolio consists of two holdings so that's the S&P 500 by Vanguard and the FTSE Japan also by Vanguard. You can see over the past month it's given me a return of 3.64% past year 13.61% and and of course, on the maximum, that is a gain of 23%. You can see that Invest Engine allows you to change to show your net contributions. So kind of like Vanguard, it allows you to see what you've gained on top of your investments or sometimes what you've lost. But luckily for me, because I've been investing since 2022, most of it is just going to be gain. So at any time, you can override the weightings that you initially set for these ETFs like I always do. Initially, you can see it was 80-20 S&P 500 and then FTSE Japan. You can see that the S&P 500 by Vanguard has been doing incredibly well and when I was first doing my £100 a month I was investing regularly and as you can see the price of the S&P 500 kept going down but since then it has increased significantly giving me my positive gain now as opposed to getting a loss when I was looking at my portfolio after I invested. That just goes to show if you want to grow your long-term wealth you have to really be in it for the long run and over the long term as we've seen from past performance these indices seem to be growing as a function of time although past performance isn't always an indication for future performance of course you can see exactly where i've bought it so again the lowest i bought it for was 61 pounds and 89 pence which now it's at 74 pounds and 18 pence so i'm really happy with that you can see the individual dividends that have been paid out so december and september this is a per quarter dividend payout so it's very nice to see dividends coming in every three months you can see because of my small holdings the dividends aren't really you know going to break the bank at only around 30 pence each next i have the FTSE japan and the last time i invested into that was back in november 2022 so it's been a while since then i wanted to look at different etfs so i haven't really bothered with the FTSE japan as you can see dividends they do pay out quite regularly and it is significantly higher of a dividend payout than the s p 500 of course you can always find out the key information for all these etfs by seeing the included invest engine breakdown which which is among the best on any apps that I found. You can see the total holdings if you're unsure of what the ETF invests in. For example, with the Vanguard FTSE Japan, you have 5.1 weighting in terms of allocation towards Toyota, 2.7 Sony, things like that. You can see by region, of course, being the FTSE Japan, it's almost 100% concentrated in Japan. You can see the sectors, so 43% industrial. And of course, if you want to invest in it, do your own research. But you can see that the FTSE Japan has gone up significantly. In my portfolio, it's gone up 15% since I've started investing, which is actually not bad at all. Of course, long term, it is up to you to make the decision. But I decided not to, you know, invest into the FTSE Japan, mostly because I'm not very familiar with the Japanese economy. And of course, we know in the 90s, the Japanese economy was in a massive bubble that only very recently recovered. So I don't want to see anything like that again. In any case, my complete portfolio of the VUSA VJPN 
has given me a dividend payout since I've invested at £4.33. Very nice to see those dividends. Of course, when I get paid from the dividends and they're back into cash, I will just reinvest the money into this fund or I will move the cash into the general cash here and then decide where I want to allocate these funds. And of course, the great thing about Invest Engine is that you can actually invest with as little as £1 after you made that initial £100 deposit. So the next portfolio I have is a very small portfolio which says VUSA VJER. So when I go into it, you can see that the portfolio balance is only £96.02. My return has been a surprisingly massive 20.98%. That's a return of £18.39. The last time I invested in this fund was again February of last year. So it's nearly been a whole year since I invested into any of these funds. You can see that I received £2.06 total in dividends. Again, I'm not an investor that really focuses on dividends. I don't really care too much. If anything, I would gladly just invest into an accumulating reinvested ETF such as the VUAG from Vanguard. However, it's nice to get some dividends and I can just reallocate that to the cash or put it into something else. So it really doesn't matter for me. I'm going to be reinvested anyway. So this portfolio consists of the S&P 500 again by Vanguard and also the Vanguard FTSE Germany all cap. So if I go into that, you can see the last time I bought it was again February 2023 at £22.77. Since then I didn't really look too much into investing into the German economy because of course given the fact that they went into recession and things like that. And I probably did make some somewhat of a right decision because of course it kept on going down and you can see that it has increased quite significantly since then but it would have been flat for me but it doesn't matter. If I had dollar cost averaged maybe into this fund you know my value right now would have been a lot higher but realistically it's up to me where I actually want to allocate my £100 per month. You can see again the breakdown of the FTSE Germany if you want to. For example, they're very heavily invested into SAP and then of course Siemens and Alliance. But in any case, this portfolio has returned me 20% and I'm very happy with that. So next I have my biggest £100 a month portfolio and that is in the GSPX. You can see in this portfolio I only have one holding, one ETF with 100% into the S&P 500 by iShares, not Vanguard. And essentially this fund is is a hedged version of the S&P 500, meaning the fluctuations between the pound and the dollar are reduced or equalized. Of course, this comes at a higher price compared to the Vanguard S&P 500. The last time I invested into the GSPX in this account was just last month. And you can see that my total return for this portfolio has been an absolutely brilliant 26.42%. And that is a gain of £188. That's almost two months worth of contributions for free, basically. If I go into the dividends, I've also received nice dividends. So the last time I was paid a dividend was back in September 2023, and that was £5.42. The S&P 500 is not known for a big dividend yield, but even every small dividend does actually feel nice. So in total, I received £10.68 in dividends and my total investment return, I think this includes the dividends, is 26.42%. You can see if I put my net contribution graph on that I'm significantly, you know, exceeded the amount of contributions that I had. However, if we go back a year, there have been some points where, you know, I've been losing money, but that is the nature of long-term investing. In the future, 10, 20 years from now on, you probably would not care at all where you bought it for. That's just little noise and unnecessary information. So as long as you consistently keep investing, it doesn't really matter about the small details now. It more matters about what the size of your portfolio is when it comes to you withdrawing those funds for something that you need, for example, a pension or maybe buying a house later down in the line. So next I have a portfolio called the DAX and here is just again another copy of the Vanguard Germany all cap. The last time I invested in this was a hundred pound buy back in November 2023. So if we go into it we can see that I bought it at £21.48 at that point where I had £100. I thought it was great to put it into the Vanguard Germany All Cap. And as you can see, it was a great buy because I am in the green from there. The Vanguard Germany All Cap hasn't been the best performer ever. And as you can see, confusingly, I have a total return of negative 2.36%, but I am up 2.69%. I think this has something to do with the dividends being paid out. So I would say I'm pretty much bang on even here. If I go out here, you can see my total return is a plus 3%. So that's a five pounds and 42 pence gain, which I cannot argue about. So my last hundred pounds a month portfolio is in the FTSE 250. This has been one of my favorite ETFs over the past year due to its high volatility. You can see that compared to the S&P 500, my return is so much less, more than four times less at 5.77%. When I add my net contributions graph, you can see that I'm not really beating that much past what I've put in. If I go into dividends again, you can see they do pay out dividends and I received £10.62 in total. So when we go into the fund, you can see that the last time I bought this, a few weeks ago, 
at £29.96 and currently my return on the FTSE 250 is plus 4%, that's a gain of £15.84 and overall that's 5.77% gain. Of course compared to the S&P 500 the FTSE 250 has not been doing too good at all. However, I do have some faith in our UK stocks and I do think that when the interest rates drop we're going to see a nice increase in both the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250. The FTSE 250 is trading well below its historical high and I think if we could go back up there it would be a very nice return. But in the short term if I had to speculate I don't think we're going to be beating the Americans anytime soon. So that's why you do need to diversify. And going forward, I am going to be looking at more of putting my money into a global fund. And that's probably what I'm going to start to do from the next portfolio update. Okay, so that's my £100 a month portfolio done. So the next thing I have is my ISA. And as you can see, the amount that I have for my ISA is considerably more. You can see that my total balance is £58,484, a lot more since the last update. Overall, everything combined, I am up by £1,359, which is very nice to see. I have only recently transferred my ISA to invest engine so the full data is not available. You can see it only goes back to as far as 27th of December that's when my transfer was completed. Since then you can see I've been having a very good time with my returns being significantly higher than my net contributions which is absolutely amazing to see. You can see I've received no dividends because it's a very new portfolio. If I go back my ISA since starting with Invest Engine is up by 1.97% which might not sound like a lot but that is over £1,080 in pure gain. So okay what I've been doing on this to make these gains is I was initially invested into the S&P 500 and then I actually did sell out which I told myself I'm not going to do but you know what I can't really stop myself. For a few days I actually did want to check out the money market market funds on Invest Engine, and I put my money in the Lickshaw Smart Cash which tracks the Sonia. This yields over 5% currently at the time of recording and as you can see I bought here and then I sold here so I only held it for 6 days and that gave me a return of £48 which is not too bad at all. I have recently gone all in in the FTSE 250. You can see that I have currently 1,888 shares and since buying it hasn't really moved much because I literally just bought it yesterday. The value of my holding is £55,981 and I expect in the short term for the value to increase and if it doesn't, well it's a long term hold. In any case they do pay a nice dividend yield of over 3%. So that small kickback will be nice in a portfolio of around £60,000. Currently I do have £60 in free cash and I'm not sure how I managed to do that. But in any case I am going to be investing that. So going forward I'm going to be using my ISA as a means of going all in into maybe just one fund at a time. Seeing how that performs and maybe exiting that fund to go into another fund. I personally find that to be fun for investing and I don't recommend that. But it is just what I've been doing over the past three years and it has worked out for me. Remember... Personal finance is personal finance, whatever works for you. However, if you're chasing the most proven method to get maximum returns, which technically you should be, you should look to be invested regardless of where the market is heading. Finally, we can look at the analytics and see the regions that my portfolio is exposed to. Last time it was very USA heavy as I can remember. Right now it is 82% exposed to the UK, so that's 47,000 £940 in the UK, but 2.4% in North America, and that's because of my GSPX holdings. I love this feature of Invest Engine, and it shows you your overall exposure towards the world. Going forward, I am going to be looking at getting more exposure towards the world. So developing markets is something that I should remind myself that I should get into, especially because the S&P 500 has made new highs this year. Investors all around the world are worried that this trend is not going to keep continuing, which is a very sensible concern, I might add. Going forward, I am going to be going all in into an all world fund, and I'm going to let you know how that goes. Maybe I'll be looking to get a bit of profit on the FTSE 250 and then, you know, diversify into a global fund. In terms of sectors you can see 16.5% financial and if you want to go into that you can see that it's mostly to do with the FTSE 250 and then we can go into the FTSE 250 and we can see we have companies such as Persimmon, Spectris, British Land Co, Hiscox and stuff like that. Again lots of exposure to industry, consumer, not too actually focused on technology because I'm not very heavy invested into the S&P 500 and again you can see the total amount of holdings currently is 1,412 and in terms of asset classes of course almost all in stocks and I have just £60 somehow in cash, so almost no cash there at all. So make sure to check out some of my other videos, and I will see you in the next video.